Hey, so you're thinking about moving to the Oregon coast or you want more information about living on the Oregon coast? Well, in this video, we're gonna go over some top myths about living on the Oregon coast and purchasing property on the Oregon coast. And we're gonna get after it right now. Hey, if this is your first time to the channel and you want to know everything there is to know about eating, sleeping, working, playing the good and the bad of living on the coast, then subscribe below, tap the bell for notifications so you can be the first to learn about the current market on the coast. My name is Eddie and I get emails, calls, texts every single day from people just like you looking to make a move to the coast. So whether you're moving in nine days or nine months and you want some help on that journey, then make sure to give me a call, shoot me a text, send me an email, let's jump on a Zoom so I can help you accomplish your real estate goals on the coast and make a smooth move. Well, we are gonna get after our top myths right now. The first myth about moving or buying property on the Oregon coast is that you are going to be able to supplement all of your big town amenities on the Oregon coast. Well, here's the deal, that's just not the case. You are not gonna have big box stores. You are not gonna be able to have the same timelines to go out and eat, go out in the nightlife, go out and shop when you want, where you want, and get the things that you want on the timelines that you're used to if you're from a larger uh, metropolitan area. It's just not gonna happen. If you're from Portland, if you're from Seattle, if you're from Salem or somewhere in the Willamette Valley of the Oregon coast, if you're doing anything like that, you're not going to have the same amount of uh, availability to amenities that you're used to expecting. So if you're wanting to go to Lowe's or Home Depot or Costco or any of those things, you're going to have to travel to Portland, Salem, Corvallis from the coast. Um, there are some places on the coast uh, that do have it, like Astoria, Warrington, Seaside. They do have a Costco. They do have those amenities, some of them, because it's a, a bigger population area. You'd think that Coos Bay or Newport would have them but they don't. Um, but if you're used to that, or if you're used to being able to go out and eat somewhere or get gas or go shopping past 8, 9, 10 p.m., that may not be something that you're able to do on the Oregon coast. So big town amenities, you think you're gonna get them, you think you're gonna establish new habits or similar habits to what you had in the larger uh, metropolitan areas that you're used to, it's just not the case. So myth number one, you're not going to be able to match those big town amenities in the smaller coastal communities. Myth number two, that the coast is only suitable for retirement. Sure, if you want to move to the coast and you want to retire on the coast, that might be something where you are super excited to retire to the coast, get something that has an ocean view close to the beach, close to a lot of activities, maybe go to a community that has other retirees where you can do certain things. Um, and they have amenities for that, well, that is an option. But there are so many communities that are wonderful for families, wonderful for singles, wonderful for uh, young professionals. You can go up and down the coast and there are communities for everybody. Whether you, you know, I, let's talk about maybe you're a family and you wanna move to the coast and you wanna know what is a good coastal community for my family. I can name 20 of them and I'm going to right now. I think Astoria is gonna give you a lot of awesome things for a family. The thing about, uh, let's just go down the line, Astoria, Seaside, Warrington, Napa, that's the Northern Oregon coast, Tillamook is gonna be great. You keep moving down the coast, I would say Newport is awesome, Toledo is great, keep going down, uh, Walport, Florence, Reedsport, Co uh, Coos Bay, North Bend, Bandon's gonna be amazing, Coquille is a good one, Keep going down gold beach can be good brookings can be good so all, pretty much every coastal community there are some that are really really good you know especially for families schooling um and everything that goes around the community aspect of that and things to do there's a ton of communities that will serve your needs as a family maybe with young kids good schooling the the big thing about these communities is you have a lot of control as a parent and as a community member um, and what goes on and what happens. Maybe some of these larger metropolitan areas, you're getting 
um, this this feel like you are losing control of the narrative and what's going on in your family and you want to take control of that well in these coastal communities you're going to be able to do that because uh where there's less population your voice is louder you know you don't get drowned out and uh you also have the opportunity to influence a lot more so when you live on the oregon coast no matter which town you choose there's going to be a lot of options for your kids for your family and that's just going to be how it is if you're a young professional it's also something that you you know the big thing is the nightlife um meeting other people your age maybe if you're single those things could be difficult i will be honest with you but there are definitely options for you along the coast and i know about all those things so give me a call on those the third myth that i want you to know about on the coast is that the weather is amazing or the weather's always terrible either one is not correct there's going to be some grayer and all those so let's just go over first the weather's always going to be good i came in august i came in september i came in whenever and the weather was absolutely amazing and there was no wind there was no rain i saw the sunset every single day that does happen that's what happens when people come in the summer they come on an august or september day where it's absolutely amazing those are the two months september is probably early late august early september are my favorite times on the coast and there's so many tourists that come along those timelines and they fall in love with the coast and they think that's what it is and then they come um, i've had a number of clients where they buy a house on the coast they come live here and then they go through the most important months that you need to go through, which are November through March. You've got to go through those months. You have to know what the weather is. And let me tell you what it is. It's going to be cloudy. It's going to be rainy. It's going to be overcast. It's going to be cold. It's going to be wet. All those things are true, uh, but it doesn't matter. If you love the coast and you love uh, everything that the coastal communities bring you, it's going to be great. Now, on the other side, if you think it's always rainy, always windy, always overcast, and always wet that's not true either when you get to may and you get to june it stops raining and it complete i mean this last summer 2023 it stopped raining i think i saw a stat that it stopped raining for over 90 days in a row we didn't have any precipitation there was worry about drought there was worry about the the um all the streams and everything that was going to impact everybody i heard that some people their wells were going dry and they had to go you know, into town and fill those up. Well, here's the deal. That is what happens in the summer. Yeah, you might get a few days here and there that's rainy, it's windy, it's wet. Uh, but most of the time from May until late September, early October, it might push back into November. You're going to get sun. You're going to get amazing weather. I mean, I'm talking amazing where if it was like that all the time, we would have the same situation that California has, and it's gonna span different along the coast. So you're gonna have two months more sun if you're on the Southern Oregon coast, you know, Bandon South or Port Orford South, than you are in say Tillamook North. Tillamook North or, you know, Garibaldi, uh, Rockaway Beach North, you're gonna have 60 days less sun than you do on the Southern Oregon coast. And that middle is kind of the sweet spot you know, Lincoln City down to Yahats, Florence, you're going to have 160 days of sun a year, whereas the Southern Oregon coast is 190, the Northern Oregon coast is about 125. That is just what you're going to expect. No matter where you're at on the coast, you're going to get around 70 to 90 inches of rain every year. Doesn't matter. That's the annual um, average precipitation. It just is what it is. So if you're looking to move to the coast and you're not sure about the weather, let me just tell you, in the summer, it's going to be beautiful. Absolutely, unbelievably beautiful. In the winter, though, it is going to be cold. It is going to be wet. It is going to be windy. And you are going to have storm after storm. But the cool thing about the winter is that there's going to be these breaks. It might be for half a day. It might be for five days. It might be for three days. It doesn't really matter. But you're going to get these breaks in between storms or in between maybe portions of these storms and, and these systems of storms that are unbelievable and when i talk about unbelievable i'm talking sunny warm no wind because for some reason when the sun comes out on those first couple days and you get these throughout the year there's just no wind and that's the big thing i would say about the coast is the wind factor when you're living on the coast there's a lot of wind even when it's sunny even when it's nice there's wind we call it hoodie weather so 
like I have a hoodie on right now, get used to it. You, you find uh, a reason to buy a hoodie all the time. I got stacks of them in my closet. So just get used to living on the coast in the weather. It can fluctuate, just be used to it. Myth number four is that when you're moving to the coast, you are going to get a beachfront property with ocean views. Well, let me tell you, the average list price along the Oregon coast, Manzanita is 875,000. Newport is somewhere in the 500s. Walport is somewhere in the 400s. Um, and you go down the coast and it's all the same. You're looking at average list prices that are astronomical right now. So to find an affordable place on the beach with an ocean view is gonna cost you a pretty penny, even if it's a fixer upper. So you just gotta be realistic with what you're looking for when you get into these different niches uh, niches and these different communities of what you're looking for. You got to make sure that, uh, you know, your budget can suffice for what you're actually wanting. So you're, you're definitely going to want to look around and see what it is that you're, you're wanting and wh where you're going to get that at the price point you want. There are some really good steals along the coast. I see them all the time where there's a place, you know, maybe, I don't know, in Yahats or maybe in, um, you know, the Bannon area near Bannon or Port Orford or somewhere near Brookings where there's a house that needs to get fixed up. It's got great bones. It's got great views. It's got great location and it's a low price point. Those are things that get snapped up pretty quickly. There was just one uh, in Seal Rock, Oregon, that was a brand new construction completely. I mean, it was like a block from the beach and it was all the way to the studs had the plumbing had the electrical everything for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and that got snapped up real quick brand new place just needed to get finished walking distance to the beach those things happen and you just if, if you're looking for a deal like that you got to look around and you got to have your eyes wide open and you got to be ready when that opportunity comes but if you're looking for a walk-in ready house for a cheap price point on the beach overlooking the ocean these you know uh, romanticized ideas of what you're going to get. It's probably uh, too good to be true. You got to definitely look around and see what you can get on the coast at your price point. But just expect if you're looking on the beach, you know, with a beautiful ocean view, you're going to be at a very high price point on that. And our last myth is that you're going to be able to buy a house and you're going to be able to get a Airbnb out of that house and you're going to be able to rent it out no matter what. And it's going to pay for all the costs that you're going to need. That's not necessarily true. A lot of these coastal counties and communities are starting to put in laws that are restraining people and prohibiting people from doing Airbnbs and short-term rentals. And in Lincoln County, that's the Central Oregon coast from Lincoln City down to Yahats, they've implemented new rules where really, other than the cities, um, Lincoln City, Newport, uh, Yahats who have their own rules. If you're in an unincorporated area that does not already have established rules, you're going to be very limited on being able to get a new vacation rental license. And once the the ownership changes, once the the closing of the property happens, you have to reapply for those short-term rental licenses. And that's how it is in, Lin in, in Lincoln County. It does change from county to county. So you've got Clatsop, Tillamook, Lincoln, uh, Lane, uh, Coos, and Curry, uh, all up and down the coast, they all have different rules. And within those counties, there are towns that all have different rules. Each town has different rules. And there can be even sections or HOAs that have different rules within them. So you wanna make sure that if you're looking to buy a house on the Oregon coast and you wanna Airbnb it, that it's gonna suffice for all the things that you need to be able to function that properly and to cash flow properly. So make sure that you're contacting a local professional, boots on the ground, that know the different rules of the different communities for the Airbnbs when it comes to the coastal communities. There are so many more myths that I could bust, but I will get those in other videos. Those are gonna be our top five myths of the Oregon coast that I wanted to address when it comes to real estate on the coast. If you are looking or you have questions or you wanna just get in contact with somebody on the Oregon coast and you don't have anybody, don't hesitate, give me a call, send me a text, shoot me an email, let's get in contact, let's see if we can find something for you, get some answers for you, help you reach your real estate goals on the Oregon Coast. My name is Eddie, Oregon Life Homes. Let, make sure that we connect if you need it. But until then, let's make this the best day ever.